Recently, I've seen an increase of questions on how to set up a management VLAN for OpenSense network switches and wireless access points. So I thought this would be a good topic to cover because in all of my guides, I typically use the VLAN 1, which is a default network for my management VLAN. For, you know, because for a home network, it's easy enough for me, for a small network, to make sure I keep everything off the LAN network that I don't want to be on my management network. Because I'll either default them to like some VLAN like the guest network for like all my wall ports that I don't uh, have anything connected to so if someone just plugs in anywhere in the house that's not already on a, some other network it at least defaults to the guest network so I kind of do that and and then it's easy enough for me to manage that but I know a lot of people want to use a management VLAN either for learning purposes or they want to mimic like the business or enterprise uh, users that that typically set up management VLANs to make sure that their network infrastructure is more secured and separated from the rest of their network so I'm going to do this in a couple of steps. I'm going to configure OpenSense first, and then I'll configure the network switch, and then I'll configure the wireless access point. You could do it all at once, because um, we're going to be connected to the default LAN network on OpenSense. That's why I'm going to make that assumption, because I can configure everything on that interface before we actually cut everything over. But we'll, I will be swapping back and forth cables just to test each step of the way to make sure OpenSense works or the network switch works or the wireless access point works. And when everything works, you can actually either get rid of the LAN network if you're not using it for anything, or you could just leave it unplugged or, or whatever. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create the management network on top of the LAN interface. So if even if you don't have a network switch with a VLAN configured plugged into OpenSense, if you unplug that network switch and you plug a computer straight you know, directly into the OpenSense box, that has no VLANs in it, you'll still be able to configure your OpenSense box. So the only thing is you have to make sure you keep everything off of that LAN network that's going to be on your management network because that network will still be active if you connect a switch to it. So you could move it to a different interface, but we're going to do it all on the same LAN interface. Uh, so that way you have the convenience of still having that LAN interface to configure OpenSense so it will never be locked out. Uh, if for some reason your network switch dies or you don't have it configured with VLANs properly or something gets messed up with your switch configuration, you could just plug straight into your OpenSense box and then kind of you can kind of start over, you know, with configuring whatever you need to do. You know, you still have access to at least OpenSense. So let's get started. I'm going to log into OpenSense first and let's do the, you know, create the VLANs and we'll get started. Now I'm in the OpenSense web interface and we're going to click on interfaces. You'll see I already have a couple interfaces here. These are physical interfaces, they're not VLANs. So when we come down to other types and click on VLAN, you'll notice that I don't have any VLANs here. You can use physical interfaces instead of VLANs if you have extra interfaces on your system. I saw I'd mention that in case you're confused why I don't you don't see any VLANs, but you see extra interfaces over here. Those are just physical interfaces. So let's click on add and we're going to click on the LAN network, which is what I mentioned earlier where we're going to put our management VLAN. So we're going to tag this as VLAN 989. And we'll call this MGMT. That's just the description for our VLAN. We'll click apply. And then we'll go up to assignments. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, this, this section will not display if there's no uh, inter extra interfaces left to assign. But since we created a VLAN, we now have an extra interface down here. We can click on this and we can call this MGMT as well. And this is what's going to show up in the menu on the left hand side. You'll see it right here, MGMT. And we'll click on that interface so we can enable it. You can click on prevent interface removal if you want to help prevent accidentally or deleting that interface. So let's click on static IPv4 and scroll down to the bottom. It opens this up. I'm just going to do IPv4 configuration. I know sometimes you guys ask for um, IPv6, but I'm just, just for demonstration purposes, it's similar concepts uh, you know, to IPv4. So I'm going to use 99.1. For the network, I like to make the VLAN IDs match the you know part of the network addresses. It makes it easy for me if I look at the IP addresses, uh, which network it belongs to, but it's not required to do that, but I just kind of like that, that numbering convention. So let's put slash 24 for the CIDR. The usable addresses will be .2 to .254. So that's what this 24 means. So we'll hit save and apply changes. Now I'm going to add a DHCP service, so let's go down to services. I'm still going to use the legacy one because it's not completely deprecated yet and it's the one most people are going to be familiar with. So let's go to MGMT and we'll enable this at the top here. Uh, make sure we click this or it's not going to be enabled. Let's do the IP address range from 100 to 199, which is kind of similar to what the OpenSense defaults to with the LAN network. So we'll hit save. 
So now let's go up to firewall rules. And since we created a new interface, we need to at least set a couple minimum firewall rules in here. So to make sure we can access, you know, have that network isolated, but still have access to the internet so you can do updates or whatever you need to do. So let's go to the, we'll go to the guest network and we'll just kind of clone these rules so we don't have to like do it all from scratch. These are the standard two rules I like to use on most of my interfaces to basically block access to all the other local networks, but allow access to the internet and DNS, of course. So we'll start with these two. We'll clone the bottom one first, and we're gonna switch the interface to the management interface. So we can, we can actually type that in so we can get to it quicker. MGMT, let's start typing MGMT net. So we just wanna replace all the guest references to the MGMT network. So hit save. Let's go back to the guest network. You see it's a lot quicker than kind of doing from scratch because I don't have to retype all these descriptions. We'll just hit clone. We'll go to guest and we'll switch it to MGMT. And then we'll do MGMT net. And then we'll do MGMT address. Okay, and then we'll hit save. And we wanna make sure the DNS one's on top. If you start with the bottom of the rules list on the other network and you work your way up the list, then it'll put it in the reverse order on this list. So that way you don't have to reorder everything when you're done. We'll just hit apply changes. There's actually gonna be one more rule that we need to create and it's so we can access our um, OpenSense web interface from this management network. By default, there's an anti-lockout rule for the LAN network so you automatically have access to 192.168.1.1. But if you're going to access OpenSense on a different network, it's going to be on the 192.168.99.1 interface. So this, this rule here is going to block access to the private network addresses. So just like we did with the DNS, we're going to have to allow access to the web interface for OpenSense. So let's clone this rule and we'll just change uh, the DNS to HTTPS since that's how we're accessing OpenSense. And we have changed this description down here to say allow access to OpenSense web UI. Okay, I'll hit save. And it should put it below the DNS rule since we cloned it, which is nice. So let's hit apply. And this is important to have this rule where you're gonna wonder why your management network interface isn't working. <laughs> so now that we have that set up. We have our we have our VLAN set up with the firewall rules and DHCP. So anything that plugs in, we'll get an IP address. So what we need to do now is go to System, Settings, Administration. By default, OpenSense listens on all the interfaces that you have configured for your network. And I always recommend changing that to be your management network. So you only have one place that you need to change it. Because you can also use firewall rules to block access on all the networks. But I think it's safer just to make it only listen on the management network. That way you don't even have to create any extra rules, which is nice. So if we go, if we scroll down here to the listen interfaces, it's set to all, which is recommended. It says it's recommended, but that just so, they just wanna prevent you to, from locking yourself out of all the different networks, I guess. But you have to be careful when you set this. You just wanna set this to LAN, and it'll say, I know what I'm doing. That's because we're doing some advanced stuff here, right? <laughs> so we, we're going to say, yeah, we know what we're doing. So we're on the LAN network currently that I'm plugged into. And then we're also going to do the management network. Because remember, we're going to test out the management network before we turn off access to the LAN network. And we might want to leave access, like I mentioned um, earlier, is you might want to allow access to both. So that way, if you get rid of your network switch or it dies or something, you can just plug straight into your OpenSense box and still have access to it. So it doesn't hurt to leave both of these on there, but I'm going to show you that we want to set that there. And we can do the same thing if, you're, if you have uh, SSH enabled. So we can say LAN and management for this as well. So let's hit save on this. It's going to reload the web interface. So it takes a minute to do that. And if all goes well and you pick the correct interfaces, you should not get locked out. It should just come back to this page and refresh it, which if it doesn't, then you know you screwed something up and you probably locked yourself out. <laughs> so hopefully you didn't do that and you're you're plugged into the LAN network and you've you've before you actually change that setting. So that's all we need to do to finish the OpenSense configuration. Now we're going to move to the switch configuration. Even though we haven't verified we could get to the management network just yet on OpenSense, but we need to create the VLAN on the switch so that we, we can actually be on the management network so we can test out the web interface for OpenSense. So I factor reset my network switch so I can show you how to do this from scratch. Um, you're going to have to be in the same network for this TP link switch as one example. You might have to do something a little different with your switch. Configure this network interface to be on the same network as my network switch. So I'm going to go to manual, click add 192.168.0.10. 
and then the net mask will automatically be filled in as 255.255.255.0. That's the same as the CIDR notation of slash 24. Let's click OK. And I'm probably going to have to just disconnect, reconnect real quick uh, to make sure I'm in the right network. So let's do IPA. So it looks like I am, yep, in the proper network. So let's go up here. I have it uh, typed in already with the address of 0 0.1. And then I've already changed the pass default password, so it's instead of admin admin. I did that step so I wouldn't have to change. It forces you to change the password after you log in, so I skipped that step. <laughs> All right, so this is the menu for default dashboard for the network switch. I'm plugged into port one. Uh, the router is plugged into port 23, and I have my wireless access point plugged into port 21. So first thing we need to do is go to L2 features, and we're going to go to VLAN and we need to create a VLAN for our management network. So MGMT, uh, actually it's the ID, sorry, 99 MGMT is the VLAN name. And we want to put port three, which is just the next port over in our management network so that we can just test plugging that in for our PC that I'm connected to right now. So I could actually, we'll be able to test our management network with that. And we're going to need to set the tagged ports for the network switch that's connected to the router, which is port 23. So I'm also going to set port 21, which is our wireless access point, to be an untagged port on the VLAN 99 for the management VLAN, which is kind of interesting to me. I, I thought if I did this, I wouldn't be able to use it as a trunk port because usually you put uh, tagged ports as a trunk port. But we're also, but the way the TP-Link switches and other switches work, you can have tagged and untagged traffic on this port, if you, depending on the settings you have. And by default, the newer TP-Link switches uh, allows all tags on that interface. So we want the untagged traffic for this port to be on the management network. So that's how we're gonna get our wireless access point on the management network. Um, but for the switch itself, we don't, actually don't need to do that for this switch because I'll show you what else we can do to get the network switch on the management network, which is actually pretty simple. So for now, we'll just do these three ports where, where I have them selected here. We'll click Create. And on the port config for port 3 and 21, any of the untagged ports, we want to set the, the PV ID. Uh, sometimes I call it the PIV ID, but it's probably not the proper way to pronounce it, but I'm always tempted to say PIV ID. So if we go to 99 for that, we'll hit apply. So if we go to L3 features, this is something that this switch supports because it's an L2 managed TP-Link switch, but if you do a smart TP-Link switch, if you have one of those, you might not see this interface menu here. This interface menu is actually makes it very easy to make this switch accessible in any network that you want. And by default, it's set to VLAN 1, which is our 0 0.1 network, because is what we're connected to right now. But we can create a new interface config for the VLAN ID of 99. See how I can put it 99 in here for this VLAN ID? And there's different options here, but we just want VLAN 99. And we're gonna call this, or we wanna click on static. I almost forgot this part. So we've got 192.168.99. We'll, we'll do dot two, because the dot one is the interface that OpenSense has for this network. But we'll just do that, and we'll, we'll make sure we do the subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, zero, okay? And then we'll call this management. You just give it a little description if you want so you know what it's for. Now, once we know that this works on the management network, we can get rid of this network here if you want on the VLAN one so it's no longer accessible on this network. But see how easy it is to get the network switch itself to be on the management VLAN. We, it should be listening on this network now on this VLAN 99, which is pretty cool. We won't click save yet just in case you mess something up and lock yourself out. But before you reboot your switch, you wanna click on save because with TP-Link switches, if you don't click save and you reboot your network switch, you lose all your configuration, so you have to start over again. Now that we have this switch set up on the for the management network, let's go ahead and switch us back to automatic DHCP so we can get our addresses from, from our switch. Now that we've you know, done with the network switch, we'll just go to automatic and we'll just hit okay. If you're switching between static and dynamic IPs, you might just have to disconnect, reconnect real quick, or just release and renew your IP addresses so that, um, let's say we got it, or we got our IP address again, which is great. 
Okay, now that we set our IP address back to automatic, we're still on the LAN network. So let's let's see, we still have access to OpenSense, it looks like. And let's go down real quick to services, DHCP. And I want to check to see if the wireless access point moved over to the management network, which it looks like it did because I restarted it now that I changed the settings on the network switch. So that's great that that's on the network. So we know that one uh, should work. We'll, we'll try logging into that in a minute. What I'm going to do now is plug into the port three of the network switch, to which is our management VLAN. I'm going to check to see if I can get into OpenSense. And I'll check to see if I can get into the network switch. And then finally, we'll check to see if we can get into our wireless access point. All right, so let's do that. All right, so let's check our IP address since I switched it over. I'm on the dot .99 network. So this is a good sign that this is working pretty well because I'm connected to the network switch, which has the VLAN on it, and OpenSense, which has the VLAN on it. So now we just go over to this page and see if we log in OpenSense at dot .99. All right, root. All right. Never save this. Okay, looks like I can op access OpenSense right now, which is great. So um, this is on the management network. And let's see if we can get to the network switch with .99.2. Looks like we can access the network switch. So if I, if I log into the network switch, never save. And then we'll go to the L3 features, interface, at this point, you could delete out uh, the VLAN one if you don't want to access it anymore, but you could leave it as a backup in case you want to get into it later. And let's go over to the wireless access point and see if we can log in. I already lo had logged in before to test it. <laughs> so it looks like I can access this now. And if I can type my password properly. Yep, so we can access our wireless access point, which is pretty cool. So I created a couple SSIDs here. You can specify a VLAN in here with our switch configuration and you should be able to still be on that VLAN because we allowed all the VLAN traffic to pass through the switch using that emit all frame type. You can even have a wireless access point on the management VLAN if you want, which I don't really recommend because wireless has a little bit more vulnerability than wired connections. But you can, if you just leave the VLAN ID off, you can create a SSID just for your management VLAN if you like. So you can do that and this will default to VLAN 99 because that's what we tagged it on, on the network switch, right? And these additional SSIDs can be on whatever VLAN that you like. So as you can see, we basically have everything, our network switch, OpenSense, and our GrandStream uh, wireless access point on our management VLAN. And you can decide what you want to do with the LAN interface. If you want to delete them or leave them as a backup, you just want to make sure nothing gets connected on those networks based on your VLAN configuration or how you have it plugged into OpenSense. If you want, you could delete the LAN interface once your management network interface is set up. And I wanna demonstrate that everything will still work just fine. So what I'm going to do is go over to interfaces and then click on assignments. And you should see a trash can icon. And if you don't, you probably have to uncheck this prevent interface removal. So let's go to the LAN. But before you do this, make sure you're connected to your management network and you have access to everything. Because once you do this, you won't have access to anything that's on the LAN. So just click the delete icon and hit yes. And you'll see that it will show up down here now as, some, as the parent interface is able to be assigned back to the firewall if you want. But you notice that I no longer have a LAN interface over here and I'm still connected to my management interfaces. Let's refresh this page. I still have access to my switch and my GrandStream wireless access point. So as you can see, we still have access to everything, which is great. You have to remember that going forward, you'll have to always have a network switch with a VLAN configured in order to get into your OpenSense box. Uh, you might get a couple warnings when you delete the LAN interface if there's like you have it associated to a firewall group or some other things like that. So you have to delete all that stuff out first before you can delete your LAN interface. But other than that, it should go pretty smooth. So I just wanted to kind of show that it's, it's really easy to remove that parent interface and still have our management interface, which is actually on that LAN interface, but just a VLAN that's on that interface, okay? This will hopefully get you started with getting your network infrastructure set up on your management VLAN. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.